In this video I will show you how to configure a Canary system with Clarity Chrome. The system is built up by an auto sampler, an LPG pump, and diode array detector and a column thermostat. So to configure these four devices I have already opened the Clarity Chrome software and now I have two options to start the configuration. Either I go on the system button here and select configuration or you can just click as an alternative here on the configuration icon. So the system configuration window pops up and as you can see no device or instrument is configured yet meaning the software was just installed and for the configuration we have to start from the beginning. To add a new device you can just click the add button here in the left corner a new window will open that shows you a list of all available modules that are supported by the software. As you can see the list is very long and since it can be quite tedious to scroll down the whole list to find the device you want to configure I recommend to just type in to this window here the respective name of the device. In my case I will start with the P6.1L and you see the list shrinks down to just one entry so just select the device and press the add button and then the configuration window pops up. So the easiest way to configure your instrument always is to use the LAN option and then press the three dotted button here. The software is now browsing the network and searching for devices available. And if this is finished you can just click here P6.L it gives you the IP address, the serial number and then you just press select and nearly every setting is automatically transferred. So you have the serial number, the software recognizes the gradient mode of the pump, so this is an LPG pump. It also recognizes the size of the installed pump head and in the case of an LPG pump it is important that you can on the one hand change here the number of used solvents and secondly the volume of the mixing chamber. This is important since the mixing chamber is not automatically recognized by the software. So if for example you had previously installed a 100 microliter mixing chamber and you changed it for some reason by a 200 microliter mixing chamber you have to adjust this here and then press OK to confirm these changes. The pump head normally is recognized by an integrated RFID chip but you can also change the settings here to uh, for example 50 ml pump head and in each case the software shows you here the maximum flow rate and the maximum pressure. Also you can change here the gradient mode of the pump to isocratic or HPG and what you can also change here is the leak sensor sensitivity. So you can switch it off or select a sensitivity between low, medium and high. Okay. Um, I changed a lot of these settings and to be honest I can't remember what were the original settings. Was it an HPG pump? What was the size of the pump head? I don't know. So I just click here again so to search the network and we see it was an LPG pump so I just click here again to select and you see size of pump head was refreshed and also the gradient mode. In general, we recommend you to keep these settings as they were taken by the software to avoid any problems. Okay, what you can also do here is to select um, this option, do not stop the pump when closing Clarity Instrument. So this is self-explanatory. If you want this option, just make a tick here. Um, that's actually the configuration of the pump, so just click OK to confirm the configuration. What we'll add next is the auto sampler. So again we go to the add button here, type in AS6.1L, the list shrinks down to one item and you don't have to press the add button down here, but can also just double click. So again its setup window pops up and you see in this case there is much less to configure. You can only type in the serial number, but as said it is easier to do the auto configuration by LAN. Again, the software is searching for available devices and if this is finished you can either press select or just double click. And 
you can see the serial number was automatically transferred. So since for the auto sampler there are no further configuration options, you can just click OK and you see the auto sampler was added in addition to the pump. OK, next we will add the column thermostat. Again, I just type in the name, select the device and then click Add. In this configuration window you can change now the name of the thermostat if you like, type in the serial number and in this case I have to change this setting here to LAN. The software scans now the network, you have to wait until the process is finished and when this is done select the device and you see the configuration window again. The serial number was filled in automatically by the software and you can adjust, similar to the pump, the leak sensor here to low, medium or high. I keep it at low and actually there are no more options to configure so I click OK and you see the thermostat was also added to the list of configured modules. So last but not least there is a diode error rate detector to configure which is a bit more challenging than the previous devices. So just type here DAD6, select the respective entry found and click the add button here. Again a configuration window opens and you see it seems to be a bit more complicated. Nevertheless I just click here to the auto configuration. You see the software finds a correct device. I click the entry to select and then confirm this by clicking on the select button. So it gives you the serial number but the rest you have to configure by your own. So first of all you can select here how many channels you would use. At the moment only one channel is selected and one channel is active but if you click here on the arrow button you see that more channels are available. If you choose more than four channels this button here will be activated giving you the possibility to extend the channel number up to eight channels. So this is actually the same view like here in the main window just simply extend it to eight channels and you can of course lower or higher the channel number as you like. You can name these channels also for example you type in the wavelengths you later want to detect with. And this point here is also important inversion of signals this means if you select this option a negative peak will be automatically inverted to a positive one and this is of advantage for example if the absorbance of your solute is higher than the absorbance of your analyte. So please only activate this option if you need it. So I selected six channels now. Here you can configure the unit of the y-axis and you can choose between absorption units, milliabsorption units and microabsorption units. Um, here down below this is important since the flow cell of the detector is not automatically recognized by the software. So in my case it's this kind of flow cell and this has to be adapted every time you change the flow cell. So then we have some more options here. There is a D2 lamp. You can't switch off. It's always on. But you can switch off the halogen lamp if you do not need higher wavelengths range. You can also deactivate the shutter control but please do that only when our support team asks you to deactivate it. Otherwise please leave the tick here. And finally you can also deactivate the 3D data option but this is only necessary when you don't want to use a detector as a PDA but rather as a multi-wavelength detector. If you want to use this option as I do in this case please make sure that you purchase the respective PDA license otherwise if you don't have the separate license an error message will pop up. So the last thing that remains is the leak sensor sensitivity here. Again, we have the four options of low, medium and high. So now that I have configured the DAD, I click OK here to add it to the list. And you see it's in the list now. So we have the name of the channels and we have the PDA option for the 3D data acquisition. OK, to configure these four modules to one instrument now, you just select the single devices and press here the to the right button. And as you see the auto sampler was added from the list to the instrument. The same is true for the pump. You could either click here again or you can do a right click here and select add to instrument. I'm doing this also for the thermostat and what's left is the DAD. 
and now what you see is that the option to add is grayed out here and same is true if you try th it this way. So if you do a mouse over here you see that the device can't be selected because the PDA cannot be configured on an instrument type LC. So you see here the instrument type is LC and to add the PDA option you just have to click here. You see the instrument is set to LC but here on the right side we have to activate the PDA option. Confirm with OK and you see now the instrument type is LC PDA. So if you select the DAD again you see the add to instrument option is available and the same is true if you click here. Okay, so now we have an instrument with an auto sampler, we have a pump, there's a detector with six channels, we have the thermostat and of course there is the PDA option of the DAD. Okay, what's left now is this option here named external start digital input. And this simply means that the software needs a signal from one of the devices that the injection was performed so that the software knows when to start data acquisition. So I select here the auto sampler and select also the number one here. And now this the auto sampler is the device that will send the information to the software to start the data acquisition. The second option here is the ready digital output where you can select a device and the specific pin through which the software informs other parts of the system that a sequence can be run. But in my case I will not select this option here. Um, in the configuration window you can also change the unit setup so it gives you an overview of the used units and you can play around yourself with temperature, flow rate, pressure, unit of the injection volume and a lot more. But I guess this is something you can find out yourself. Much more important, I guess, is this here, the method options. This defines when a method is sent to the instrument. So as written here, the method is changed each time after an instrument is opened, or an already existing method is opened, or when you confirm a modification in the method setup, so when you changed a method. And you can now decide if sending of the method to the instrument should be confirmed by the user beforehand, or if the method should be sent immediately without asking to the instrument after each time it was changed. So I will leave it here to prompt from a confirmation. Okay, with this the instrument finally is configured and, well, there's one additional option. You can name the instrument individually, so in my case I just type in here analytical system. And with that you can close the configuration window and now you can start to open the instrument and write your method. Just one thing I forgot, so I opened the configuration window again. And what I want to show you is that you can't change the number of channels as long as the detector is added to the instrument. So if you open the detector configuration here, you can't change the number as you see. So first you have to remove the module from the instrument, so it's not part of the instrument anymore. And when you open the configuration again, you see now it's possible to change the channel numbers. So click OK to confirm and add the detector again to the instrument. So always if you want to change a module please always remove it from the instrument before make the modification and then add it to the instrument again. And that's finally everything. Okay, have fun. So then we have some more options here. There is a D2 lamp, you can't switch off, it's always on. But you can switch off the halogen lamp if you do not need higher wavelength range. You can also deactivate the shutter control, but please do that only when our support team asks you to deactivate it. Otherwise, please leave the tick here. And finally, you can also deactivate the 3D data option, but this is only necessary when you don't want to use a detector as a PDA, but rather as a multi-wavelength detector. If you want to use this option, as I do in this case, please make sure that you purchase the respective PDA license. Otherwise, if you don't have the separate, the separate license, an error message will pop up. So the last thing that remains is the leak sensor sensitivity here. Again, we have the four options of low, medium and high.